Yo, hey, everybody, this is the Purge. I'm bringing you guys a Purge Cast the Pub. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to be anything like Purge Cast the Pub number 17. I am trying to not focus on the gold that was Pubcast number 17. To be completely honest, I don't know if we can reproduce it uh, because that pub game was just too perfect. But um, what I want to focus on here is uh, this is a recommendation from one of the fans. I don't remember where I read this, whether it was on Reddit or whether or not this was in the uh, the comments on the YouTube video, but somebody said you should cast a high-level game. I mean, there are actually a couple of comments like this, I think. People wanted more high-level games so that they could actually learn a little bit more. And that's definitely something that 17 didn't include at all. It was absolutely no learning. And I was very aware of that when I was casting it. There was very little to learn. It was more of like a haha, this is hilarious thing. So what I'm going to try to do here is focus more on the picking and the pub aspects of the game. So we didn't get to see the drafting as it went on, unfortunately, because that bug still exists in the game. But we should be able to at least go over the players. Once again, the skill level in this is high. The previous pub casts are all normals. This one's high, so it's somewhere in the top 10 to 20th percentile of skill level or something like that. I think it's maybe top 5th. 5th to 20th, so these skill levels are all lower than mine. Unless one really, really good guy happens to be pubbing with a bunch of terrible people, in which case someone might be better than me. Um, but keep that in mind. So we should be able to see some decent play, but some general mistakes. And I want to focus more on teamwork aspects, because when you're at a higher, slightly higher skill level, you will see more teamwork than a normal skilled game. Normal skilled games is a lot of standing around, and a lot of people just generally sucking. So hopefully we don't see that nearly as much here. So let's go over the players really fast. We have Naxul playing the Bounty Hunter. Uh, SF Tom Mib is going to be playing Invoker. We've got Mean Eyed Sausage playing Lena on the bot lane. We've got Karak playing Skeleton King and ST playing Phantom Assassin. For the Dire Team, Ishaku is going to be playing An Enigma. We have Korea playing Anti Mages, is probably not Roots Korea, of course. Uh, Atrox Vex is playing Crystal Maiden. And bot lane, we have Vizuzuz playing the Sand King. And finally, we have Paradox playing TA. So, a couple things about the picks. For the Radiant Team, they have a little bit too much carry potential. Um, Looks like Lean is actually shifting to the top lane to dual lane with the Bounty Hunter, which is not really worth it. A Bounty Hunter long lane is obviously fantastic and should be <laughs> left to solo. Um, she should actually maybe come to the bot lane. The problem is that they have a Phantom Assassin and a Skeleton King, so if anything, they kind of would have the to split these begins. up, but they don't have very good heroes is the main issue. I'm not really sure what the Invoker is doing with the starting item build. The extra regen is good when you're Exhort because you won't have Quas to fall back on, but... Um, the fact that he only has two Ironwood branches is kind of peculiar to me because I don't think he's going to be getting a bottle. Or if he does, I think it's a slight waste here. So, yeah, Sand King, our Skeleton King, and a Phantom Assassin dual lane. This is a terrible lane. One of these guys should be pulling consistently if possible. The Dire Team's doing a long lane Sand King, which is going to be pretty much free farm for these two guys, though they are splitting halfway, which is not so hot either. And he's going to find an Illusion Rune at level 1. Illusion. Which will help. Uh, TA versus Invoker mid. This is a lane in TA's favor. Her starting item builds are good. She should be able to take a lane advantage here. And Enigma's going to start off at the small camp, which is fabulous. He should be microing this creep, but it's going to die here. So, very slight mistake from him that will decrease his DPS in the short run. He went Basilius with the Clarity Potion. He should be popping a Clarity already, so one slight mistake from him. And Crystal Maiden looking to stack a little late on the pull. It was 44, 54 seconds. It's later than I usually hit it, but it should be fine. And yeah, it's going to be fine. So, 54 seconds, just a timer that he likes here. And he's going to run back with the creeps and be able to pull that into the wave. So this is an anti-mage versus now a bounty hunter and a Lina. The benefit of having the bounty or the Lina up here actually is that um, anti-mage actually isn't going to be able to farm very well here at all. Um, his quelling blade stout shield is not very good to start with because any harass he takes will work him down pretty fast. And he should actually be pulling this creep way past. It's not worth it at all. I mean, this the, he's losing experience right now. Any creep that dies right here that nobody is by, they're losing EXP. And the tower is taking damage as well. That's 200 points of damage, and this EXP now in the neutral creep is being split between the anti mage as well as the crystal man. He should be pulling the wave past and last hitting all of these creeps. More creeps are dying here. I mean, he could be level Dyer's possibly 3 at this point. God, this attack. really annoys the hell out of me that he's doing this. I'm not even kidding. I am so frustrated right now that he's not grabbing last hits here. Crystal Maiden is now going to sap the XP, but she has no chance to last under her tower. She only does 42 damage, and that's the important distinction. She does get the range creep at least, but with a Quelling Blade, you can take those last hits under tower. It's not always easy, but you can do it. Another creep wave wave spawn. I don't know why Enigma is here either. I, he should be farming somewhere else, but he's actually contesting this. For, and he's actually stealing the farm from the anti-mage. It's a huge mistake. Enigma should be in the jungle. Crystal Maiden should be the one sapping the EXP from the neutrals and trying to last hit. And the anti-mage should be in lane, picking up the wave as it pushes into the tower. 
I mean, this is a huge mistake. Absolutely big mistake out of these guys. It's very important. The distinctions like that are, are something that we don't normally see as much at lower levels, so that's something that's nice to talk about here because of the fact that you usually don't see people who are competent at pulling and stacking and playing the hard carry role. So the main mistakes, anti mage should be the one last hitting under tower. Plus he has a stout shield and he will take damage. Crystal Mane, look at this. She's tanking creep damage right now and taking a lot of damage as a result. That would not be happening to anti mage because he has a stout shield. So, pretty big mistake from him. He should be in lane getting these last hits. Crystal Maiden can easily take the jungle pulls, and Anti Mage can take the lane pulls with a little bit of harass, but he does have survivability, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. Nigma should have just sat in the jungle the whole time. He wasted a lot of time there. He should be popping his Clarity Potion. Cl clarity, clarity Potion, Enigma. Enigma, Clarity Potion. I don't like a Basilius start either, by the way. I think this is a waste because there's usually a lot of items that Enigma ends up having to pick up to end up being decent in the mid game. Um, I actually feel like Enigma is one of my strongest heroes in the game, so I, I really dislike the Basilius pickup. It's a very old item build, basically. Before Soul Ring existed, Ring of Basilius was the best option, but now that Soul Ring exists, just skip the Basilius, get a bunch of Clarity Potions, and go straight into a Soul Ring. You don't need the armor bonus to your Eidolons if your micro is effective. If you're really a, if you're a bad player and you're not good at microing your Eidolons back, this guy has not been microing his Eidolons back by the way then you can get away with having a basilius i guess but i strongly recommend just going soul ring first maybe he'll disassemble this and make a soul ring still that'd be kind of cool to see and then go like tranquil soul ring i wouldn't say that's a good build i think treads are most of the time generally necessary but maybe that's what he's gonna go for all right and let's spend a little time on the raiding team as well i've been like staring at the jungle with pull spots but i think we did go over a couple basics that were very crucial there on the top lane crystal maiden kills the pull she's doing a great job pulling and stacking anti-mage made the biggest mistake of coming to steal that exp when he should have been last hitting and enigma did as well he should have been uh spending his time there on the bot lane let's see how the last hits are going looks like they are trading by that i mean they're both trying to last hit um, Skeleton King, somebody should be pulling. I mean, if you ever have two hard carries in a lane like this, or you have two heroes that should both be getting farm, one of you should be a dedicated puller. And since it's a solo Sand King, I would say let the Skeleton King go to pull, probably, because Phantom Assassin is going to be slightly more effective as a hero. I think that would make a little more sense. He picks up a Vampire Aura, level 4. I kind of wish he had stat levels, because then he would have more mana, of course, but um, he's looking to buy boots now. And since boots are not cheaper, he can't afford those. On the mid lane, if we look at the last hits, TA is at 22 last hits and Voker at 13. So this is about appropriate if uh, TA is doing her job right. And she actually has perfect item and skill build so far. Doesn't look like she's taken any harass. And Voker has a Sun Strike, but haven't seen any of those plays happen. Looks like Naz, whatever it was his name, Naz, Naxul, sorry, is going to die under tower. He dove too far. This tower is already down to 137 HP. This should not be this low. They lost a lot of HP on this tower because of misplays from these two guys, and that's actually a really big deal. You don't want your tower to take damage, and this is a solid dual lane. There's no, there's like no situation when your tower should take that much. You just, all you have to do is pull the creep wave past. You tack the creeps and run them past, and then they don't aggro to the tower, and the tower doesn't do any damage. That's pretty much what should be happening. Lean is level 4. I kind of like the Fiery Soul pickup, to be honest. I don't like the Mantle Gauntlet pickup. I wish this was two gauntlets, maybe, or something else. Um, but I do kind of like... I've been thinking about this skill build a lot. And I've never done it myself, but I think it should be possibly done. Because you're always going to cast two spells. The downside is that your Light Strike Array is going to be weaker for a really long time. By, what is this, 60 magic damage, which could duplicate into an AoE. But... You get so much attack speed by casting spells, and that's so cool, because you're going to cast two spells, you get 80 attack speed from this, and the movement speed, and that you should be able to make up for that AoE damage just by getting the double spell cast. Dragon Slave being wasted here. You should never throw a Dragon Slave like that for harassing their full HP. Now, PA is now level 5. I kind of wish she had a level of blur. There's the Burrow Strike, and I think... Not seeing him, but okay. Refraction was really late, but they still get the kill. <laughs> It was an invis gank from TA. It worked out nicely. Um, Refraction. Yep, Refraction can be maxed out. And Sand King's level 6. I don't. Where's Skeleton King? Skeleton King now jungling. Okay, so this is why he picked up the life steal. Is because he wanted to just get levels and then transition to his jungle. Well, the problem with this is, is that it's not effective at all. Because in this period of time where he sapped experience from the PA, he then leaves the lane and forces the PA to be at a level disadvantage towards her lane opponent. Now, Sand King is not extremely far ahead, but he, is, he just get, does get a little from the kill, but... This forces PA to now be in a uh, solo versus solo disadvantage with it in terms of levels. So if Sand King is a good player, he should be able to repetitively stomp the TA, which is what should be happening right now. Actually, he should be doing a Burrow Epicenter. But for some reason, he's scared and hiding by his tower. I have no idea why he's doing this. Probably because he can't see the Sand King. Or Skeleton King, sorry. So if Skeleton King really does want to do some jungling, 
What he should have done the whole time, stack and pull, stack and pull, stack and pull, stack and pull. Or, since he's a Quelling Blade, pull into this creep wave. If he could pull the wave in here, I'm just going to ignore kills and stuff because I want to talk about things that you guys can learn. Pull into the creep wave. He would pull into this camp, use the Quelling Blade to kill this tree, and then he would pull this camp into the neutral or into the lane creeps that were there you see this at the pro level all of the time it's a very very effective way to end up getting um well this guy's gonna die that was really bad Death at my hands it's like he actually ran out of mana and then casted epicenter right before he died that was weird he should be able to kill a solo pa there oh there's no excuse to dying like that so he should just jungle the whole time but now he's actually focusing a lot of oh god i scribbled this bad he's focusing a lot of effort on hard camps did he stack that? He didn't even. Uh, you don't want to fight Ursa Warriors. They're not good camps. I mean, his farm is basically inadequate. As a jungling hero, as at level 5, Skeleton King's DPS is not that high. Even with the Quelling Blade, it's just not there. And it does take a while for his DPS in the jungle to actually be efficient for him to be in there over a lane or pulling. I mean, the reason that you pull the creeps is because the creeps kill... They give you a lot of damage output, and you're, you're able to kill the creeps a lot faster with the result of having your allies there. Just because you can jungle doesn't mean that it's efficient. And this is the same reason why you never want to jungle a lone druid. It's because he doesn't do enough damage in the early game. Yeah, you can do it, and you can do it without dying. But the farm is so inefficient that you don't want to do it. The very One of the very few heroes that can do it effectively is Lycanthrope. And he has been nerfed recently, but he still can jungle. So, yeah, he should not be doing this. He's very delayed in his EXP. And let's look at specifically his EXP per minute. So let's look at the EXP per minute. Skeleton King down here at the bottom. Level 3 third from the bottom. He's only doing marginally better than a uh, support hero and this uh, this bounty hunter. So we might actually see Sankin get killed now that Karak has shown back up again. Yeah, and he will die. He's, oh, he's actually... He played that very smart, actually. He almost... He almost was able to kill them with the Caustic Finale. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to run away. So he tried to get the kills by using Caustic. Um... So if, hypothetically, if the, if this was played really well by the Skeleton King and the PA combo, Skeleton King would be doing stack pulls the whole time. This would deny experience to the, the Sand King. Sand King would get less experience as a result of the pulling and therefore creep denying that would happen. He would get levels completely independent of the PA. The PA would get complete solo EXP from the creep wave. Radius Skeleton King would get EXP from attack. this camp dying repeatedly, and maybe this one as well if he pulled into it. And that would give them a net two hero huge experience advantage over the Sand King. So if you compare the Skeleton King's EXP with the Sand King's EXP, Sand King is by far ahead of where the Skeleton King is. PA is also ahead of the Skel Sand King, so this is kind of reflectant of what should have happened normally, but their difference should be much higher. I mean, even the pulling hero should be at a higher EXP level than the Sand King would be. So I think they could have done this much, much better on the bot lane. It could have been to the point where PA had levels, slight level advantage over the Sand King because Sand King would have played safe. And then occasionally the Sand King would come out of the lane and try to gank. He's going to get caught by the TA, but oh, he does waste his mana though. This is the biggest mistake that he made here. That's uh, a two second stun. He now does not have enough for his ulti. And if uh, TA can chase this, I don't know if she'll get it though. Is that a Burrow Epi? It is, but I don't know if he'll grab him. Uh, ooh, I think he's going to die here. Ooh, that was really close. Can he burrow? Burrow, 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 burrow. He's dead no matter what. Yeah, even burrow strike when you're taking a projectile is going to score the kill. And he actually just died. He had three stick charges. I think he could have had his ulti there. That's a pretty big mistake. See, he thought Skeleton was going to come back alive there, which is why he melted. And he had a three, uh, three charge one before he died there, so he should have popped that. He could have survived. Looks like he did spend his money at least. Yeah, it looks like he saved all of his money with buying treads, but it's good he bought treads at least, but his skill build is still kind of... You know what? All right. If you're doing a jungly build, if you're literally just jungly, you don't need to max out your stuns. So in that sense, I would say it's okay to actually max out crit second. But if he was in a lane, I would say, no, 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 this is a mistake. Bottom tower don't max out crit attack. first. Um, if you're jungling, I guess it technically works, but it's still not effective to jungle. So I would say pass it up. See how Antimage is doing top there is the Sun Strike. Nice, that was a track kill as well, so Invoker gets EXP from that. Nice plays from him. He's going Phase Drum. The Phase Drum build is more focused on a Quas Wex Invoker. If you're going to Exhort, um, I almost argue that Exhort, or Treads is better because you want to match up your huge bonus damage from Exhort with attack speed. Uh, is he maybe going to be able to get this kill? PA is doing some harass here. I wish he had Phase Boots instead of Claymore. Phase Boots actually does equivalent damage to Claymore. I think he's going to be able to grab this unless somebody TP'd in. Good blink strike. Yeah, uh, with 1400 gold, you can definitely finish phase boots and it gives you equivalent damage. Yes, Battle Fury is great, but can main aid. I think you can grab this. He was a little slow in his cycle here, but I think he can still get this kill. Dragon Slave, thank you. Okay. Um, always 
Light Strike Array, Dragon Slave, and then Ulti is usually the best combo to do. Because uh, Light Strike Array, is it a Luguna Blade is range, a farther range? It doesn't look like it, actually. Yeah, Dragon Slave is actually longer range, so I guess what I was about to say is wrong, but... Almost dies to creep tier. Solid gank, though, works out. Gets the kill on the Sand King. Crystal Mana has fantastic items, I love these. Tranquil Boots, Wand, most importantly. So we got two levels of Arcane Aura, which is fine. And a lot of Radiant Radiant's Heroes now made as Skeleton King is trying to do this weird pushing thing. Is that a blast of the low ground? It was. Top tower has fallen. They have not broken the shield yet. Enigma now has treads. Awesome. Black Hole is going to only catch Enigma here. But they do get the Bounty Hunter, and they might be able to clean up on this as well. Let's see. There's this He's actually really fast right now, despite only being Exhort. That was actually pretty imp impressive movement speed, so... Alright, I guess things are getting pushed. One Meteor is going to shut this down, though. Uh, I'm sorry, the Wex is just not good enough for that. I thought that was going to do pretty decent damage, but only did so much. Did stop the push, though. And Crystal Mana will Frostbite. There's Burst Strike. Epi, 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 Epi. No Epi. Didn't do it. Uh, I think he might still die, though. He's going to have a Burrow in four, and I think he's going to have this unless he whiffs it. Oh, no, Crystal Mana gets the kill. Solid play from CM. CM's playing really, really well this game. Anyways, yeah, Treads, Basilius, Soul Ring. This works out very effectively. I, he should use Soul Ring there. A little bit of a mistake. Let's cross over. Bro, Epi, Epi, please try Epi this. He should Epi this. It might not get the kill now. No mana? Okay, it's okay. T is going to pick up the kill. Sand King's being a little too scared to use his Epi Center. When you catch a solo hero like that, especially a PA, that's like an enemy carry, you got to just shut him down. Very important to do so. Enigma is officially crazy. Nice. Big kill on the Enigma. He's a lot of position here. And, uh... Yeah, Skeleton King is not done beast moding yet, throws another stun, but he's going to be out of mana if he does get killed now. There's the Burrow Strike, Shuriken Toss, and Skeleton King, oh, gets mana just enough. Wow, they do actually grab the skin, Sand King just barely. He shouldn't be fighting this here, there's a lot of Eidolons as well, they're actually not focusing on the right here. Now going on Skeleton King, CM still being a boss, there's another boulder. Just going to get them some gold, but... Radiance top tower is under attack. Nope, Tia will live. Antimage still pushing top. Uh, he did grab a Gloves with the Battle Fury. I kind of wish he had Treads, but at least he does have some attack speed from the uh, Battle Fury buildup. Other than that, his items are great. This is absolutely fine. He's doing an okay job. Once again, PA Wish uh, went Phase Boots first. The Phase Boots actually lets you crit for a decent amount of damage in the early laning stage. He would have been able to do better against the Sand King and possibly scored some solo kills, honestly. But he's now farming the top lane. Crystal Maiden, uh, Void Stone, completely waste. Don't buy this on Crystal Maiden. If you really want to get more mana, just put skill points into Arcane Aura. The Void Stone, I mean, what are you going to build with this, first of all? You're probably not going to have enough money for a Sheep Stick. You're probably not going to have enough money for Yules, and you're probably not going to make any of these items either, nor do you need them. You really just need survivability items. Worst comes to worst, you get a Force Staff or something, but... I mean, it's a complete waste. As a hero, Crystal Mana does not need the mana regen. You're usually going to be dead anyways. Oh, that was a blink in. Okay. Templar Sass is not doing a very good job of refracting before he goes in, actually. CM might use her ulti here. We'll see. There's the track, actually. She needs a nuke. That's just nuke it. Dragon Slave gets the kill. Got to nuke Enigma. Put an ulti on... Nice. All right. Lena's doing a nice job here. We're going to pull up some more kills. And I think we're going to see TA die. Track this guy. Track this guy. All right. That's a dead TA. They will get this for sure now. Yep. Pretty easy. So Skeleton King now picks up a third level of stun. And he has another Gloves of Haste. Let's look at the team's GPM. EXP per minute, we've had that up for a long time. Sorry, I haven't switched this. But TA's at the top. She has uh, 58 last hits. Anti-Mage is up there and the Az is sinking. Anti-Mage has been pretty much free farm in the top lane and pushing solo, which is the main reason. So let's look at some gold per minute right now and compare this to how things are going. Dire team's doing the best. Anti-Mage at the top. Uh, TA's there as well as is Enigma. Um, everybody else is doing pretty mediocre, and this is just kind of inadequate play. Is that the longest TPs I've ever seen, or what? What just happened here? Item is per unbuilds perfect for anti-mage. I would maybe like to see a wand, but it's okay to skip one if you're doing really, really well. Um, Sand King, I would like to see go farm a blink dagger, but it's kind of busy roaming a bit. Top lane is not being farmed right now, but it does look like anti-mage is on his way, so that's that's going to be okay for him. And Sand King also farmed with the Burrow Strike and Caustic Finale. That is all good. And still no phase boots or treads picked up. Please, guys, finish your phase boots or treads before you finish your battle fury. I think it's absolutely crucial here. On, on almost all cases. Uh, this could be Enigma Dine. A little bit too much slow on him. He's got the black hole. It's a great black hole, actually. He's going to catch three. If he can Barapi, please Barapi. Oh, the Deafening Blast is going to stop him, though. 
He does spawn some creeps, and another stun stops that. Enigma goes down. Crystal Maiden trying to help. Frostbite's on the PA, and does get the kill. Nice plays from him. Even still, Void Stone not making a huge impact, and yeah, it, he's not going to live. Look at that. that was, he spent a thousand gold, or 875 gold on Void Stone, and he ends up dying just barely. If he could have gotten away a little bit farther, he would have been fine there. No track from Bounty Hunter is a pretty big mistake. Sage's Mask is okay. He's going Medallion. Um, not as survivable of a build, but against an Anti-Mage, this is probably okay because you do want to burst him down with physical damage. So I would say the the uh, Medallion with his skill build is probably okay, but he should be tracking a little bit more. He missed a track kill just now. That's a huge mistake. TA wants to make some kills. Ash, TA might actually die here. We'll see. I don't want one, 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 one. Nope, no wand for him. But he's going to die from track, so it's going to end up being worth it for them. So, um, anti-mage, okay. He was missing a lot of mana, but he'll be fine here. So Skeleton King's had to build 1,300 gold. Uh, has 8 assists and 2 deaths. He's not doing too terrible. Things could be better. So GPM's still the highest for anti-mage, of course. 4 kills on him. nigma has been playing pretty reasonably well. His item build is fine. He's got a blink dagger now, so he will be able to do blink ulties. Um, still think this avoid stone is a huge waste. Nobody farming the bot lane. Could be pushing this as well. Anti mage is in the jungle. Lena sitting mid. She has a staff with a bracer. If somebody would have just stunned her, she would die. Nothing happens. And Ogre Club next on Bounty Hunter. I like this a lot, actually. Um, by, buying, by buying a medallion, he doesn't really have enough HP. But with the Ogre Club, he's going to be sitting good. Here's a Sun Strike. That one's going to land. Should have tracked this here. But instead, it's going to grab a Crystal Maiden. And there's the initiation. She's going to die really fast. Anti Mage backs off. PA is going to die as well. Uh, how do they see Bounty Hunter? Okay, he wouldn't lose again. Oh, this Skeleton King's crazy. Sucks that he's up against an Anti Mage because he just drains his mana. It's all over. So, Wand Press should throw a stun. Oh my god, they could have killed him. Okay, they do kill him. Nice. Invoker does enough damage. I didn't think that was going to happen. Burrow Strike on two. I think they can make these plays. Yep. All right. And now they're going to clean up pretty hard. So there's like a lot of action going on in the mid lane, which seems kind of weird. It's not really like, it's just kind of like they're running into each other and fighting. It's not like real pushing. And I think that's one thing to point out about the skill level here. It's like people are playing their heroes approximately well, but they're not exactly playing it as effective as they could. They're not actually organizing pushes and team fights and things like that. I dare say Skeleton King needs a soul ring against an anti-mage with a wand as well, possibly. Just because he will drain your mana. And Phantom Assassin should go back to farming. Like, there's no point to team fight if you're playing a hard carry and you're behind, guys. Unless you're, like, really far behind and you know that they're going to out-carry you late game, you should just 5-man roam. But at least finish, like, your basic boots. The boots give more utility than almost any item in the game. He doesn't have a Battle Fury yet either, which is also going to put him really far behind. And I think that's the largest mistake that this PA is making. I mean, he should have had phase boots at 8 minutes. 6 minutes, even. Against the Sand King solo. Unless the Sand King was good. The Sand King is marginally okay, but he's not that great. So it would have made it, he would have been able to get relatively fast phase boots, especially with pulling coming from the Sand King, or Skeleton King. Skeleton King now with an armlet, great item build on him. Once again, Dire Team kind of comes forward really randomly, and Enigma runs way too close. And now he's going to get out of position. Another Sun Strike is going to score the kill. Voker making some nice plays here, but he's going to die this time. And Skeleton King's going to have Zulti, turns on his armlet. He should be fighting this. So here comes his respawn. He should probably, he should have beast moded that, but he got a little scared. These guys are really not that survivable. And once again, I mean, the Void Stone is giving Crystal Maiden some mana, but... She already gets a lot of Arcane Aura now. I just don't think you need it. Seven mana per second is pretty insane, though. Initiation on the TA. She's going to die pretty soon here. It's just like this weird continuous team fight mid. In the meantime, Anti-Mage is counter pushing top. Very smart play from him. He's actually playing his role probably better than almost everybody else in this game. It's not too hard to play Anti-Mage in that sense. You just go push somewhere else where your team fights usually. And then once you have really good items, the fun ends usually. So... I, I wish that his team was doing a little bit better, more coordinated fighting. Like, Sand King should go off and farm. They could take the bot tier 2 tower. I mean, they're just constantly pushing mid. They're just, like, tr constantly pushing mid. And this is so dangerous. If the raiding team got their shit together, they would all 5-man smoke. Raiding and they would just sprint mid and engage. And kill a bunch of heroes. I mean, Enigma is constantly mid, and he's constantly too far forward. And that's why his kill death looks pretty crappy. It's because he's making bad decisions in terms of him initiating. So... Look at some other stats here. KDA, if you're curious. 
TA is going for either a Deso or a BKB, either of which is okay. Did I just hear a BKB? I did. Nice BKB usage from Bounty Hunter. He's probably looking to use phase boots and move his items around, is my guess. He's gonna go invisible. At least the dire team doesn't know about it. Crystal Maiden now standing around a bit. I would say farm neutrals, but they're all killed by anti mage. And Sand King now is finishing his blink dagger, which is great for him. PA finally finishes the battle fury. Should be punching jungle creeps most likely to get this farm up. What is her GPM? It's probably pretty bad. GPM is 316. It could be worse. But she's died so many times. Died five times here. It really puts her behind. Um, jungling is great when you're really far behind on farming. They're going to find somebody that's going to be Skeleton King in the jungle. He's actually cooled on for his ulti, so he's got to be careful careful for a bit. TA also a little intimidated here. And PA is still afraid to fight. Radiant team has no wards up, though, if we change the vision for a second. Um, Radiant team can't see a whole lot. They just have a ward up here, I think. Is uh, Lena warding? Yeah, she is actually warding right now, which is great. I think the Arcane Boots is a bad call in terms of buying items. She already has the Staff of Wizardry, so her mana pool is good. Her HP is not is not effective. And that's one scary thing about Lena, is that you do have to be very, very careful about your HP, especially if you miss, you miss your initiations. You can get way behind. Ooh, Sand King may end up dying here. There's the track, but he's kind of surrounded. He needs to BKB immediately. He is going to BKB. Definitely blast on Enigma. He's going to black bullet, but good play by Invoker to shut that down. PA goes high ground. Crystal Maiden's going to ulti this. She needs to go back in, maybe. Throws her nukes at least. The guy Crystal Maiden. All right. Skeleton King's to respawn. Yeah, they're cleaning up, and this is exactly what I was talking about. I mean, all they had to do was fight this. The buyback's completely... Well, they will save towers, I guess, but I don't know if it's worth it. They all spent, like... That was like two buybacks for 800 gold here, and... What is he doing? Is this guy an idiot? That was a really bad idea. He just died, bought back, and died again. It's like, I'm going to 5v4 their full HP heroes. This will be cool, guys. So, yeah, that was exactly what the raiding team needed to do there. The dire team, Anti-Mage was still farming. He's got more than enough items. He's ready to fight, actually. The fun is over. He's got Manta style. And they won a team fight 5v4. The team fight was kind of badly fought from the dire team. I think Enigma was initiated on. Or no, I'm sorry, Sand King was. Bounty Hunter pulled up past, and then Enigma died over here as he tried to black hole. Like, it wasn't a very good team fight from the Dire team, and that's important to look at, but most importantly, it was a 5v4, and that means that they have a better chance to win their, than their opponents, and they did win the fight while anti is farming. So now they have a kill advantage. I don't know if that's going to reflect in the graphs, but big jump up there in terms of gold. It's going to go back towards the rating team, and the EXP massively going up because they won a one-sided team fight, and they killed TA a second time and got a tower. So that was like a big swing for the raiding team. They should be able to push from this, maybe. The main issue is that they're going to have to deal with an anti-mage, and that's going to be really scary, especially with just an exhort invoker. Um, Quasa Wex usually can deal with them slightly better. The Deafening Blast is going to do solid damage, but what they really need to do is get the Wex up so that his disarm duration is high, because that'll stop all the illusions for attacking from attacking for 4 seconds, which is exactly what you need from an anti mage So, Invoker actually decent counter. But you have to be careful not to spend all your mana. It looks like he's going to Yule Scepter, which will make sure his mana is high. Uh, Bounty Hunter's items are actually fantastic. I really like his item choice this game. The urn is pretty late and a little unnecessary, but that was a solid dodge. <laughs> um, Bounty Hunter now, I'm sorry, Phantom Assassin finally finishes phase. Once again, get the utility from phase boots at the start of the game. Don't put it off this long. It's, it's usually not good to wait. Ogre Club's a great pickup. They have so much hard carry potential that it's okay for everybody to grab blacking bars, I think. I mean, they're up against an anti-mage who obviously ends fun and stuff, but... Grabbing Black King bars when you have this much carry potential is generally a just straight up awesome decision. It's gonna be a Vlad's next for Bounty Hunter, and also great they have um, two other melee carries, so they're gonna have insane life seal about 45% when they stack with Vampiric. And Enigma shouldn't be on the logo, and they should maybe initiate on this. I think yeah, they do have a Sentry Ward up though. So, but all five are here. I would like to see a smoke out of them. Is this a is a Dire Ward? I think. And Bounty Hunter's gonna run past the wards. He might initiate. There's one nuke from Crystal Mana. Do they have detection at all? I don't think they do. There's a DD on the TA, which could be bad, but if the Raiding team is serious, they should just force the fight here. Anti-Mage is still off farming in the jungle, but he's actually going to be in the fight. Those HP is low. I mean, they're all just kind of standing around right now, waiting for the fight to happen. They're, Bounty Hunter shouldn't engage right now, though, because his team's all backing up, but... They're all playing kind of weird right now. Their positioning is really bad on the Raiding team. Crystal Mage is just throwing nukes, despite not even knowing that Bounty Hunter is there. That's pretty weird. Is this a... This is a Dire Sentry. Okay, so they did see the... They did see the Radiant team all sitting up on the high ground here. A lot of these Dire team is also wasting their time massively. They they can see that the Radiant team is not here, but look how all four are standing mid. It's because they don't understand... They don't understand 
that the raiding team is not there. And think of all the time they could have spent farming during this period of time, while they all just stood around mid lane. There's so much they could have done. The raiding team is actually splitting up and farming. Anti-mage is not stopping, of course, but, I mean, they lost a lot of potential by just sitting there for a while. Lena going for Aghanim Scepter. I'm glad she got a point booster, at least, because that's going to give her some HP. I think Aghanim is a decent item on Lena. Against an anti-mage, though, probably not worth it, because the bonus damage is not going to pay off a whole lot against his spell shield. They're going to find a TA on the high ground. Uh, can they track this? Yes, they can. All right, she's going to die for sure now. MP center from the low ground. This is going to be really good. Oh, man. Oh, God. Wow. That was huge. And that's all it took for them to win the fight. One black hole and one MP center. That wasn't even about anti-mage. That was a five-man swing. That was really, really good by the dire team. That's one of the cool things that Enigma does, is he can just swing team fights like that. If they could have stopped the five-man black hole, it would have been all over. And they probably hyped they should have had somebody sitting outside, expecting the black hole. I don't think they saw a vision of that. Actually, wanna, let's look over that little team fight again here. We'll back up a little bit. I want to see exactly the positioning. I'm going to slow this down a slight amount. So we're going to put this at half speed here. I'm going to get vision of the radiant team. Uh, Enigma is coming from over here. And here comes this blink. That was such a good black hole. And then that B-Center from the low ground as well. That was a five-man burrow strike on top of that, too. Enigma is still freaking out. Enigma, stop freaking out, dude. Enigma, it's okay. Enigma, you're gonna be alright, dude. It's gonna be okay. Enigma, get yourself together, man. Get yourself together. Alright, so they didn't see Enigma coming. It was just kind of like an unfortunate situation for them. They grouped up a little bit too much. And sometimes Enigma does that to you. So that's pretty much what happens. They should set the lean outside. They should set the bounty hunter outside. Somebody should be sitting outside the radius and uh, trying to stop Enigma from doing stuff like that. Because he doesn't have a BKB. He is going to build one, but he didn't have it there. And all it took was a blink dagger to swing that so perfectly. It was a solid, uh, solid team fight. Now they're going to be able to get a Rax from this. It's going to give the Dire Team a huge advantage, all because of the swing of fight there. Antimage is also getting close to Heart, which won't be very helpful as all, at all for the Raiding Team. And it's going to be a Heart Recipe, but not the Reaper itself. Oh, is he going to try to take two? They're going to try to take two, but I don't think this is very wise. The Raiding Team is going to be up. And they need to initiate on like Sanking or something. No go on the Antimage. Antimage can well, Cold Snap. Blink is going to be delayed. There's the Sun Frostbite on Phantom, though. It's a Blink forward again. This is looking really bad for the Dire Team. They shouldn't have been fought in this. They should have left immediately, and they're going to lose a lot of heroes. Two heroes dead now. Might see Enigma also die. He's got a Blink stop for three seconds. There's the Yules. And, oh, the stun a little bit too early there. Okay, now he's tracked. He's dead for sure. All right, so pretty big mistake made by the Dire Team. They lost three heroes. Is that a buyback again? Why Why are these heroes buying back? I don't get this. Such a waste of money. He bought back from dying there. That's not worth it at all. You just give him more of an advantage. If you don't need to use... If you don't need to immediately, like, defend, then it's a complete waste to buy back. So. Anti-Mage is running through the jungle. There's one stun. He, oh, this looks bad. He gets you. Oh, there's the ulti. Wand is pressed as well. He actually might die here. He's the blink forward. He needs a cold snap, but he's actually in cooldown. And the right clicks, and he's gonna die there. Another mistake. Some more, more and more mistakes we have. Them. And he's gonna buy back. Oh my god, these guys. Why are these guys buying back so much? There's so many rage buybacks from the Dire Team. It's not efficient at all. I like how Sanking, Cindy back here in Biz, looking for the uh, Epi. I would like to see him maybe stay in this spot. That way he's impossible to be spotted, but. Um, so yeah, mid Rax is gone. This puts the Radiant Team at a bad disadvantage. They are probably still. Look at that jump back. I heard a BKB again. Radiant's bottom tower is under oh, it's attack. a mid. He wants a crystal mid. This is not really worth it. Not not very smart to do this. Alright, he does get the kill at least, but he's going to be visible for another 5 or so seconds. I think he's going to be able to live. He just needs to stay alive for like 2 more seconds here. Alright, he's going to die. Nope, he just goes in this. Not very safe of him to go doing solo ganking that deep though. Not very wise, but he does score the kill pretty easily here. Gonna find a haste. He should be able to earn himself. I hope he does. Haste! Earn yourself, man. Anti mage fighting mid. Invoker might have to run. Just run away. Yeah, good, good, good. So, Dire Team finally kind of congregating for a push. It's like the first time they've done this here. 
Enigma still has no BKB. I don't know why they're pushing mid. This is another mistake that they're making. The Rex is already gone here. They should be sitting top. They should go top to push, and they will shift over now. On the bright side, this does pressure them a bit, but obviously everywhere they go is going to be tracked. So um, the raiding team is not going to get caught by this. And if anything, they don't realize Crystal Maiden is there, isn't there, but they should try to engage if possible. Yule Scepter, not very useful on the hero. It's more mana regen. She doesn't need mana regen, especially if you max out Arcane Ore. You're getting four mana per second from this skill. You don't need a Yules. Get like a BKB. He's going to BKB this. Wow, actually, I guess they're fighting. He should be going in. Go in, dude. Oh my god, kill Enigma. Yeah, stuns on Enigma. Enigma's going to die right off the start, and this is looking really good for them. Definitely blast buys in a second. There's the Epi Center. That's going to do so much. BKB was really late in Bounty Hunter. He lost like all of his HP as a result. And Sand King loses. Oh, I'm sorry. He actually is going to survive this. So he comes back alive. He's got to be careful about the Anti Mage, though. He turns his armlet back on, but he's going to get killed. I don't think the Rainy team played that quite perfectly. They could have probably won that team fight, I think. They had a lot of BKBs. Uh, they didn't have one on PA, though. And Top Rax is going to go down. So biggest mistakes made there. I, I really do think that if they were good players on the Radiant team, like really good players, they could have won that fight easy. They killed Enigma at the start, so there was no black hole. That All they had to deal with was Epicenter, and Epicenter was enough to cleave him up. And the main issue is that Bounty Hunter didn't BKB on time, so he lost about three quarters of his HP just from the Sand King. That was a pretty big mistake. He's going to be able to get this for sure. It's a sure he can kill. Oh my god, one hit. Alright, he does die to creeps at least. But now he's going to die because he has no mana. Ooh, definitely blast will buy him a second. So he lives, okay. Nice. Alright, so what they need to do, BKB is on everybody. As soon as Sand King pops his, or Skeleton King pops his BKB, he should have jumped on Invoker. He, or I'm sorry, Enig. He spent like two seconds dancing, and he's just gone straight for him. So yeah, Sunstrike only does so much. There's the track. Alright, they might be able- oh, he's gonna Manta the track though. Bad timing for him to run out, but I think they- oh my god, that ulti. Oh god, I feel bad for them. Like, they- oh man, BKB is a little unnecessary. Okay. He's gonna throw his life away. Alright, they still win it. Alright, um, that was- who, who died? Was that Invoker? God, that was such a big ulti. Hit three people there. Gems picked up. They're gonna have BKBs. Yeah, BKBs on everybody. Pop in, kill Enigma first, and then win the team fight. If you kill Enigma first, you can win the team fight easy. They have enough physical damage output to kill Anti Mage. Despite him having a heart and a Mantis Stall and a Battle Fury, they can do it. They've got a PA. As soon as PA gets Battle Fury, it doesn't matter. Or, uh, BKB, sorry. I mean, two BKBs. They have three BKBs. That means that Sand King does no damage to three heroes if he uses his epicenter. That means that Crystal Maiden does virtually no damage. That means Anti Mage doesn't do any mana drain, and that's 64 of its damage output per hit. So, BKBs are huge. They really, really are. They stop the mana drain. It's a big deal. So a Skeleton King should be saving his BKB till the team fight starts, basically. So that's the biggest mistakes they made. I'm going to uh, speed this up just a little bit because we're having some lull as the Dire Team's waiting to respawn and they're kind of just going around farming. Crystal Maiden's wards are helpful here. High ground wards that'll spot where the raining team's moving. You want to go aggressive at this point because they are in the lead still. If you look at the graphs, the Dire Team's still in the advantage in terms of EX or gold, but EXP is actually equal. So... At this point, let's slow this down a bit and talk about what the Radiant team should do to match this. First off, they're obviously moderately behind because of the fact that um, the Dire team has been winning team fights. They're missing two. What they need to do is basically push out their lanes and try to make some towers and racks happen. If they can go equal on towers, they will actually have a gold advantage, I'm pretty sure here. It's only 10,000 advantage for the Dire team. They're not that far ahead, and they have better f heroes. They their team fight is stronger. I can tell you that just by looking at their items and the heroes that they have. If they can just kill Enigma at the start of every fight, they should be able to win a fight. It should be able to happen. Hasn't really happened a whole lot yet. The but the major disadvantage is that they've lost two racks now. So by getting this far behind, it really does make it tough for them to possibly win this. Bounty Hunter might actually... They should fight this. Deso is a great pickup. There's the track he's gonna stroll with. They should fight this. There's the first blast. BKB's being popped. Burrow Strike comes through. Kill any of these teamfight heroes. Crystal Maiden dies right off the bat. bat. Then kills Sand King as well. Do they have the gem? They do actually. They should be able to clean this up super hard. Enigma looking for nothing. He doesn't have a black hole yet. There's the Epi Center, but I don't think it's gonna matter. It actually does pretty good damage. Skeleton King's gonna die without his ulti. And Lina. Alright, so now it's just Anti Mage. Everybody but Anti Mage. Can Evoker survive though? I don't know, but I think they can win this fight. Skeleton King buys back. Solid buyback. There's the Blink Strike. He's gonna blink. They do have track though. 
gonna put him pretty low. More dagger blinks. Nice. And they do grab it. Yeah, they have the right heroes to fight the Anti-Mage, but honestly, I think they would honestly have this game. The Radiant team would have won this game. I think they're going to lose this, to be honest, because I don't think they're going to be able to push out past a 2 racks disadvantage. But if they would have won that team fight top like they should have, they would have this game. Because you can see, they were this close to getting that swing into their team fight. It didn't take much for them to start winning the team fight. Enigma didn't have Black Hole there, by the way, so it's dumb for the Dire team to initiate. Um... But they have so many BKBs now that they can literally just right-click down heroes. Skeleton King should probably turn off Armlet when he's not using it. I wish... I don't really know what he should get now. I think he sold his wand, actually. He should maybe rebuy one, or at least get a magic stick. He really does need that extra mana. I mean, if they just throw a Lina ulti on, like, a Crystal Maiden every fight... That's one dead hero, at least, you know? They have ways to section off and kill solo heroes. He's gonna buy a Mystic Staff. Um... Not a huge fan of this, I wish this was a Ghost Scepter, probably, because if Anti-Mage jumps on her, she can die pretty fast. I mean, the more mana is fantastic, and I'm sure she would love to have a Sheepstick, but I don't think she'll get there before the game is over. If she does pick up a Sheepstick, though, that would be the best. It's the best counter against Anti-Mage. And they should have spent this whole time pushing out lanes, by the way. Anti-Mage has been dead for a while. They should have just started pushing. Period. They should just push hard. They should not, like, push the one wave and then back up. Because you know that in 30 seconds they're going to have to push it again. And they have the way to do it. They've got Battle Furies on PA. PA can push out the lanes. Bounty Hunter is looking for kills. I think he's... He, can he solo grab Crystal Man? I think he can, actually. This is going to be a solo kill. Oh, my. He does a lot of damage now. He throws Shrek in at least. He's got this pretty easy. I believe. He just needs to get a little movement speed. And his allies are going to try to help. Oh, they have Dust, actually. Good BKB. He's going to get the kill now. It's gonna buy her second. She's gonna. All right, a solid play from CM. I, th I think he needs to run. Yeah, yeah, he's smart to run. He's gonna die though. All right, so that was unable to get a kill. If he actually had a mantle style, he would be. He would have been set. But his items are still not bad. Just uh, against the crystal maiden, things like if he would have popped his BKB on the crystal maiden, he would have 100% gotten the kill. Actually, if he could stop the frostbite, so that's probably. He didn't want to use it, obviously. And now this is gonna force the dire team from going in. That was a BKB on Enigma. He's got to feel pretty stupid about that one. How many unintentional BKBs have we seen in this game? Looks like he's also trying to get a Yule Scepter, which is kind of unusual. And now they're going to try to take the last racks. I don't think they can really fight without the, the Bounty Hunter, to be honest. So I think they are looking pretty screwed here. And most importantly, if they do team fight bottom, there's no towers to defend the, the, the throne here. This game literally came down to that one team fight top. There's obviously lots of other things that the Radiant team could have done better to possibly pull out the win. But most importantly, the Radiant PA and the, the SK could have gotten more farm bottom. That would have been very useful. Um, mid lane seemed to do relatively fine, but they just needed to have slightly better team fight going on. And they actually are going to delay this, I think, until Bounty Hunter gets up. Alright, so they are going to stun the Anti-Mage. Oh man, that was not worth it at all. Do not ulti the Anti-Mage, guys. Please don't do that. Stun Enigma, stun Enigma, stun Enigma, stun Enigma, stun Enigma and kill him. Just kill the Enigma. I think Karak is, might die here. Anti-Mage still fighting. Still BKB. What is man? This is so weird ass team fights. They are like not. That was such bad play from the Radiant team. That was like the worst team fight I've ever seen. They didn't focus fire at all, and that was the problem. Kill the Enigma first, or kill the Sanking, or somebody that's way out of position. At the start of every team fight, you have to like. I'm gonna watch the team fight again, just really quick, guys, because it's very. They fucked it up so bad. All right. So, at this point, right now, right here. All right. Anti-Mage is stunned. Got a TN in the low ground. Enigma is over here. Enigma wastes his BKB. They don't realize that. They probably didn't see it. But Enigma only has 1400 HP, and you want to kill him before you can Black Hole, because Black Hole is obviously the best ability that they're working with. Interrupting Sand King's epicenter is also going to be fantastic. But if we look at this point, Bounty Hunter is still dead. Skeleton King just popped his BKB all the way over here. Huge mistake here. He's going to lose about like three seconds of BKB before he even gets the team fight. The throne's probably going to die regardless, so I don't know if it's it's obviously not that important, but if we look at the decision making here, you can just see all the mistakes they made. Here comes the ulti. That did 466 damage. It's supposed to do 1250. Never ulti the anti-mage unless you know it's going to kill him, pretty much. And then we see a cold snap on who? On Enigma. Good, good, good. Enigma gets cold snap. He should be getting stunned right now, but that's slightly delayed. Lean is also attacking creeps. I mean, basically everybody just escaped. And he's going to stun, I believe, the TA here, which is a huge mistake. She's got a shield. You do not want to stun her. It's not worth it. Don't stun her. Stun the Enigma. Enigma should have been the one stunned. And PA should just crap on Enigma right now is what should happen. So she's going to blink in. 
She will try to crap on Enigma, but imagine if he was stunned. If he was stunned right here, it could have been Skeleton King and PA jumping on him with help from Invoker. And Invoker now starts attacking the TA. He will continue to go for Enig Enigma, but he Enigma goes to the high ground now. We see a four staff from Invoker to try to survive. And now they're changing targets again. It's like they changed targets from Enigma. It's like they, they targeted two heroes at the same time. And once again, PA sees the low hero. They change targets again. Sanking, or Skeleton King's gonna die without mana. And then we see an epicenter. And Midnight Pulse. Does he, is he gonna black hole this? I don't even remember this part. He's not gonna see a crit on PA. Okay. He's an AM multi, saves it. Alright, and that's pretty much it. So that's the last team fight. I'm sure the game's gonna end up for this. Without even looking at the scoreboard. And yeah, that takes the tower. We're gonna see buybacks from Crystal Maiden, and that is pretty much the end of the game. It really wasn't sanking, it was just sloppy team fighting from the rating team. They literally had this game won. There was a period of time there where they had more gold and more farm, and everything was looking good for them. But uh, yeah, they're not gonna be able to take the win because of it. So, failed team fight top. Lost the second racks, and at that point, it's just too hard to defend and come back. If you do get two racks, you have to push your lanes out and go for a smoke gank and try to make plays and push, push, push. They could have put the PA top with the Battle Fury to push the wave out. Um, they could have put maybe even Sanking counter pushing or Lena counter pushing. Something like that would have worked, and uh, that's going to be the end of the game. So, thanks everybody for watching. That was Purge Castle Pub. This one was more high level, so I'm sure you guys can see a lot more team fight and slight things that were made mistakes that really do separate the high level players from the very high level players. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.